Welcome to my CEH version 9 chapter 3 review. We are looking at cryptography. Before we understand what cryptology is, before we have a definition of it, we need to look at some of its goals. Its goals are confidentiality, integrity, non-repudiation, and authentication. Confidentiality is keeping things private. Integrity is verifying that what was sent is what is received. Non-repudiation is basically assuring that someone cannot deny something. Authentication is verifying that you are who you are, whether that be something that you know, something that you are, something that you have, a location that you're at. There's different ways to authenticate you, but it's verifying that you are you. So the uses of cryptography is different applications. Uh, we have different types of keys, symmetrical and asymmetrical, meaning both key uh, to unlock and lock versus asymmetrical which is one key to lock, one key to unlock. We deal with a lot of uh, cryptography working with hashing. We have to understand the purpose of the keys and types of algorithms and key management. So these are all general uses that we're going to be discussing in this chapter. So cryptography is a process of hiding a message, whether it be written or electronic, basically so a third party will not be able to read what you're sending. So, so let's look at some of the reasons why you may want to use cryptography. If you work or encounter businesses like financial or healthcare or government defenses, a lot of these have a component where they require cryptography. It's not just required, it's mandated, like you have to. And it's not just any crypto, uh, cryptography. It is going to be specific algorithms that they require. So key reasons could be things like legal issues, compliances, regulations, based off the industry. You're also going to be looking at things like the acceptable algorithms and the appropriate key links dealing with these algorithms. Not all cryptography is created equal. So depending on your environment, you may have certain accepted and certain non-accepted algorithms. For example, SSL version 1. A lot of web browsers have already shown that that's no longer acceptable because there are newer versions out there. So with that being said, what is cryptography? As information has changed the way that we've uh, dealt with items, not so much we've gotten smarter, but we have a better understanding of more processes. Technology has, again, drastically improved the way that we've done things, but that also means that technology has become uh, a threat as well. So crypto uh, cryptography is a way to protect information, it's a way of blocking threats to security. It preserves the specific state of information. And it's a constantly evolving body of knowledge. It basically verifies that you can keep things secure in those four different goals. So there is a hierarchy logical as an example. Hieroglyphs. Hieroglyphs. Egyptian hieroglyphs had a spiritual and religious significance. They were not designed to preserve secrets, but they could if you couldn't read them correctly. They were used to communicate with other worlds. The usage was restricted to royal family and religious orders, and they could not be deciphered again until 1799 and the discovery of a Rosetta Stone, some type of key that was allowed to translate it. So hieroglyphs are one example of cryptography. Uh, ancient civilizations use them, again, whether they be texts, whether they be tattoos on a person. It was a way to, again, physically secure messages uh, long term. So there are some modern applications of cryptography. Well, a big part there is going to be like our mobile technology, our texting, and our messaging apps as well as things like e-commerce. Because again, it's a way to encrypt data 
as it trans uh, transverses the internet from our mobile device to our payment vendor, whoever they are, so that we can pay th things securely. We can uh, provide secure uh, pathways to uh, shop or to view content or anything like that. With our mobile technologies, that same cryptology prevents theft. Well, more like identity theft, not so much theft, but it's a way to, again, protect yourself. It also prevents duplication, whether it be a website duplication or a device duplication. There are ways to verify that things cannot be easily copied. It also helps prevent eavesdropping, especially on messages. Terms to know, uh, things like plain text and ciphertext, things like keys and decrypt, because again, a plain text will be encrypted with a key that becomes a ciphertext that's sent through a medium so that you can get ciphertexts and you'll decrypt that back into plain texts. So that the encryption and decryption process will use different algorithms that will use keys to decrypt and encrypt based off of your requirements. Okay, so let's go ahead and bring in symmetrical and asymmetrical keys. So again, symmetrical keys are the same key that decrypt and encrypt our items. So again, it, confidentiality is there, it's overall, uh, overall very simplistic, it does provide things like basic authentication, and it's quick. Uh, drawback is, again, key management, and a lack of this whole non-repudiation uh, capacity. Because again, symmetrical keys same key for both, so again that's a drawback. Things that use it are going to be like uh, DES, Triple DES, Blowfish, the International Data Encryption Algorithm or IDEA, RC2, 4, 5, and 6, the AES standard, and that's actually a fairly common standard, and another type of algorithm called TwoFish. As, compo or as compared with asymmetrical, also known as public key cryptography. It uses a key in a pair consisting of both a private and a public key, meaning there are different keys for both one. This does ensure non re <laughs> I cannot pronounce it, non-repudiation. This does enforce authentication. It does help solve the key management issue. While it's slower, this is typically considered more secure. So here's the process. We sign a message. We uh, use a public key. Sorry, I'm sorry. The sender verifies the messages, and they have to then sign the message. They send the receiver a key, and they send the receiver a message. Now, how they get that key is going to be more subjective, and uh, they will take their key and they will actually decrypt that message. So let's look at the signed message part first. So the signed message has a, ha a hash algorithm, then it generates a hash value, and it's hashed with the sender's private key. That then is a signed message. You send that signed message because you're the only one with your private key. You send that to a, a person and they can then decrypt it with their public key. So let's talk about the hash. What does that mean by hash? A hash is a one-way function. It can be computed in one direction, not the other. It's normally a fixed length, and it creates a unique output for every input. So if we have a message and we hash it, it should generate a specific sequence. However, if you have the same message, it should, again, generate the same hash. So if you're able to get someone's hash and you're able to figure out what the message is, every time you see that hash, you know automatically what that message is. So hashing is some, does have some problems. Different types of hash can be things like the MD hive hash or the SHA hash. Those are two of the big common types of hash. So what's the process? You scan and create a message. You try and hash the message. 
you encrypt the hash with a private key, you send the combination to destination, destination sees the message came from source, you uh, see that the sender is destination, retrieves the appropriate public key, you decrypt the hash value, thus validating the identity of the sender or the source, you return the algorithm, or sorry, you rerun the algorithm against the texts, and you compare the two. That verifies integrity. Basically, if you have the source and destination, you have the appropriate keys, you can verify all of the steps down the way. So the role of a digital certificate and the public private keys. A, di a digital certificate component replaces other forms of authentication. A user who presents the credentials must have a method in placing that allows for credentials to be validated. So what that means is a digital certificate, and they can be a uh, third party or first party, but you can verify identity based off of that. You see it very commonly through websites. You'll have a certificate authority issue a certificate to a website. We trust the certificate authority, thus we will trust the people that they issue the certificates to. That's just kind of how that works. The certificate authority handles the digital certificates. They can also revoke a certificate. They also validate. Again, we trust them, so we trust who they issue them to. So let's talk about a PKI, or Public Key Infrastructure type system. We have a main certificate authority, and they actually then can have the appropriate sub-authority, like a registration, or a policy certificate authority, and then they can have some issuing authorities. As long as we trust the root certificate authority, we're going to trust all of the sub-certificates that they issue. And when they revoke them, we're also going to trust their revoke lists. So the application for cryptography, things like uh, IPsec or VPN type technology, it could be uh, things like verifying encryption methodology or encryption types as it flows through the internet. That could be a type of application for cryptography. Here, if we're talking specifically IPsec, we're talking about that in a VPN type setting, and it operates the network layer. That's just one, one type of application when we're talking VPN technology. Another one could be PGP, or pretty good protection. This is going to be encryption within messaging or emailing. Again, very similar to pro, uh, public and private key encryption, both sign and encrypt communications but PGP typically is done through email. One of the last things is Secure Socket Layer, or SSL. There is a process between a source and destination so that you can secure your communications. Developed by Netscape, it normally is done through, again, a web interface, HTTP over SSL, or over Secure Socket Layer, and this is the process how we encrypt traffic through that HTTPS. That's actually the end of this chapter. I want to thank you.